up to this point, we've created a number of our own pipeline elements. We, we pulled one from the book that uh, selects certain attributes. We've uh, built one that uh, computes derivatives, and we've built another one that does linear interpolation in order to fill in missing data. And now it's time to put all of these pipeline elements together into a single pipeline. So let's go ahead and do that in, in code. So, so there are two different sets of attributes that we're interested in here. There's one that is uh, the set of attributes that we're going to be computing the derivatives over. Uh, and then there's the set of attributes that we're going to select at the end. So actually our pipeline we're, we're going to build is we'll do linear interpolation first and then compute derivatives on a certain subset of the attributes. And then finally, we're going to uh, select uh, a certain set of columns to pull into a NumPy array. And, and ultimately, that might go into a machine learning model. In our case, we'll just do a little bit of plotting to convince ourselves that we're doing the right thing. So let's, let's go ahead and create our list of attributes for, uh, for derivatives. And we'll pick on uh, the left wrist again. And of course, if we wanted the right wrist, we would add that to our list here. And then we'll also, uh, let's uh, spell at attributes correctly. And then our list of attributes for selection, let's uh, pull out time and left wrist X and left, sorry, D left wrist X. And, and we're of course selecting out some of the things that we're doing for derivative, but for this example, that's okay. Okay, so now let's create our pipeline. And remember the pipeline takes a list of tuples. So first is our linear computer. And that takes as input a data frame and returns a data frame when we do a transform there. And then we're adding our derivative pipeline element. And remember that we're doing 50 hertz sampling here. And then the last thing is our selector. Remember that the strings on the left-hand side of our tuples doesn't, they, they don't actually matter. It's, it's useful for some of the uh, display kinds of things that you can do with pipelines. And, and it's also useful for identification if you have to do a little bit of introspection with your pipeline. So the last, the last uh, pipeline element is our data frame selector, and it's going to take as input uh, a, tri a tribs select. So the, this specifies which attributes we're going to pull out of the data frame. And I realized that I did not uh, include derivative here. And there we go, that is a definition of our pipeline. So let's execute that. And now let's make use of it. And I'm going to do, I'm going to call fit transform. That's usually what we're, how we're going to be using things. In this case, we're not actually doing any fitting along the way, all of those are null. Uh, actions, but that's okay. Uh, but in the more general case, some of our pipeline elements actually might be doing fitting. So it's reasonable to do a fit transform in, in this scenario. Execute that. And the 8.shape 
is now 15,000 by three columns. Uh, so, so it's three columns because we're selecting time left wrist X and D left wrist X. So let's go ahead and extract those elements out. We'll take out uh, all columns, uh, sorry, all rows and the zeroth column. And then the, the one-th column and finally the So one of the disadvantages of us now being in a scenario where we uh, just have a NumPy array is that we actually have to remember which column corresponds to which of the uh, variables. Whereas if we left things in the data frame, then we could actually address the columns directly. Ultimately, we have to be in NumPy arrays, uh, however. And then finally, let's uh, let's generate the plot. Plt plot t dx in green, and let's set our x lim as well to our zero to thirty seconds. Uh, and there we go. And you'll notice that we have no gaps uh, in our data. So where that red traverses upwards greatly. That's where our derivative is very high. Uh, as we head downwards in this region here, you'll notice that our derivatives for the most part are below zero. And again, uh, we have an increase here with a, with a peak. There's an increase here with a peak. There's an increase there. Uh, there's a fairly sizable decrease right in there and you'll see that our derivatives are pretty low. So. So from this plotting perspective, uh, it, it looks like we've uh, appropriately set up our derivative computation as well as our uh, linear imputer. And that ends this pipeline example.